Hello, good morning from a spring-like Southampton. It's uh, gorgeous out there. Um, yeah, smoking a uh, fern down three-star um, umpool with uh, a spot of the old um, what's it called? And soda bed by Esoterica Tabacchiana, which was kindly sent to me a while back by Heyo. Um, very kind it's lovely tobacco it's um virginia maryland tobacco now i've done some research on this and uh all i could it was, it was very in interesting um the governor the english governor at the time uh, this is in the 17th century was trying to discourage farmers from growing tobacco but because it was a cash crop and uh, had a lot of difficulty uh other than that uh, and they call it sot weed, which is rather funny. I couldn't uh, actually find too much out about it. Um, uh, lots of kind of technical stuff about tobacco production, but as as you said, what Maryland tobacco is not much at all. Uh, all I can tell you is in this mixture, which is Burley, Maryland, Virginia, uh, Greek Orientals, and Cypriot Latakia. It's um, it's very nice indeed. It's uh, It's a, it's a nice tobacco. Um, yeah, made by Soterica. Well, made by, blended by GF Germans. Uh, a, a blender of some repute. Um, yep, yeah, so that's uh, the old and poor. Very nice pipe indeed. Uh, I love the shape. It's uh, kind of extreme. <laughs> I think that's why I kind of like it. It's uh, Leswood makes a great pipe. Um, they are, I mean, for handmade pipe, you're paying 100 and something. You know, from a one star, which would be uh, in this version, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, would be uh, at this size would be around 120, something like that, probably a bit more now. And um, the smaller ones are just over 100 pounds, the one stars. So they're not cheap, but you get a nice bit of uh, handcrafted silverwork, a hand cut briar, and uh, it, it's a nice pipe. And smokes like a dream, which of course is the all important thing about pipes. Uh, I always say to people, if you can spend 20 quid on a pipe or 30 quid and get something that smokes well, you, you've done well. Uh, I've spent more than that and had pipes that aren't particularly good, so there we go. Um, yeah, so uh, it's been a great week. Um, I want to give a, do a few thank yous. Um, Thank you to Hampshire Pipe, Morris, um, who very kindly sent me some very special tobacco. I'll be saving that for a review later on. Um, I also got a package from James, as you'll know, I, myself and the Professor, aka the Herald Perseverant, uh, did a, a little snuff review. That stuff was really nice, actually. Made by Bernard, sold in Thailand as Gold Key. Um, I made it, I don't know why I got, got it all sort of muddled up with gold uh, tigers and whatnot, but you know, there we go. Proper beer does funny things to the mind. Um, and last, but by no means least, Colin, like your pipe, he sent me uh, a great package. Some of his uh, homemade um, pipe stands, uh, this one he did with a key ring, which is really cool, because when you go out to a pub these days, obviously you have to go outside and sit in the garden, and the ashtrays are usually in pretty... I hate to say this about the Wellington Arms, and I hope Bob never watches my videos, but he keeps a fine pint of beer, but his ashtrays in his garden are disgusting. Uh, they don't get cleaned, and you don't want to put... I, put, I you know, Some people don't give a shit, excuse my language, but uh, I personally would rather not to do that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer my keys onto this uh, one. It's got a little bar for Abbey key fob, and... Um, and... Um, when I go to the pub, I should be able to rest that down and pop my pipe in it. Um, yeah, so that was really kind. And Colin sent me some Tranter, Frederick Tranter snuffs, their own secret recipes, Regency, Jockey Club and Bo Nash, which over the coming weeks, the profession and I will uh, shovel into our hooters uh, with great vigour and review them. Um, this would be the first time I've tried any of the snuffs 
for Trant. I think Wilson's make them for Tranters, but the recipes for these three are of Tranters' own, you know, own take on them. So, well, yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, other things. Um, oh, yeah, the the, the anti-tobacco uh, lobby got to uh, be in their bonnet this week over here, demanding price hikes and all sorts of things. I hope they don't, uh, the government don't give in to them. If you're a cigarette smoker, you're already paying £7.50. So that's uh, for 20 cigarettes, which is... Um, oh, dear. But I guess that would be about... Getting on for 10 11 $12, something like that. So it's quite expensive already for a cigarette. And for a pipe smoker as well, a tin of uh, good you know, brand of tobacco. Dunhill's £11 plus now. So that's, you know creeping up to 20 I know in Canada you get really uh, hit with the tax but you know I think um, so far and no further I recognize that they tax it to a certain extent because the harm it can do and the cost of that may be to the country but I think smokers pay more than enough tax already personally in their lives and also for tobacco so it's outrageous and they I mean uh, I saw for the first time I went into the local supermarket and all the tobacco is now, uh, you can't see it. It's got uh, doors on the tobacco thing. And it's just ridiculous. I was watching people going up and saying, can I get 20? Oh, we haven't got any of those. And they have to keep, and then of course the people working there don't know where the cigarettes are. Uh, you know, and there's so many different brands and whatnot that um, that it's, uh, it's probably a, a near on impossible task to keep ahead of, on top of all that. I, uh, saw a chap asking for pipe tobacco and uh, they had to go right there you know they didn't even know where it was and uh, then when they finally found the pipe tobacco they didn't have the one he wanted and so and then he had to keep guessing uh, and they hadn't got the uh, list of things out or anything like that it's just bloody ridiculous sorry I had to swear there it just makes me really angry I don't think anybody starts smoking because they see a, a tobacconist uh, uh, display I really don't and um, it's just a, you know, the, the serious things in life that you think governments should perhaps do something about, uh, they do nothing about. And the things that, quite frankly, are none of their damn business, they, they spend all their time and uh, rub, pat themselves on the back and the, the medical lobby, pat them on the back and all the rest of it. And it makes me really angry, but there we go. I don't want to make every Sunday video me getting really angry about something, but, uh, you know, oh, here he comes. Uh, Nico's uh, not very well. Um, he's had a well. I took him to the vets last week, and he's had a he's had a mild stroke, and his eyes gone all funny as a result of that. He's going back this week again. He seems, you know, he's all right in himself. I'll just uh, hang on. Nico, say hello. As you can see, his non-patch eye is a bit strange. It's kind of sunk, and. Um, yeah, well, that's in the same place. So he's not been very well. He's a bit poorly, a bit out of sorts. But so uh, we went around the park today and oh, just move that back again. Uh, he was, you know, pretty chipper. But uh, you know, he's old, isn't he? You know, you know, we all get older. Things start going going wrong and falling off and whatnot. <laughs> so anyway, anyway, so anyway, and a, a kind of positive thing now. Uh, I was thinking about. Uh, what I said last week about tobaccoreviews.com. Well, it's all well and good, you know, saying, um, you know, having a, a, a whinge about these things and then, but not doing anything about it. So, uh, in this week, uh, I, I m made some notes. I watched, finally, thanks to her, watched um, Philip's videos again. I'd made some notes of my own before I did that. Um, just kind of things that are, you know, are useful to know. Name, obviously, the name of the tobacco, who's blending it. What type of tobacco is it? Is it a vapor? Is it an English? Is it a, is it an aromatic? Is it a Lakeland? You know, uh, and then kind of things the balance of the tobaccos in the blend. You know, is it heavy latakia, lighter latakia, which come through more the Orientals, uh, and smoking qualities. You know, burning, taste. Uh, you know, and and so on. So. Uh, I, I'm going to go into that in a little more detail because obviously I think, you know, it, other factors in reviewing um, tobacco, I think is important that you work your way through the tin 
I always start off, uh, when I've not tried something, I always start off by smoking it in that porcelain pipe I've got made in uh, by Zenith in um, Holland, or I use a, a clay. Uh, importantly, they do, of course, do take, uh, especially clays, they do take the taste of the drag people say, oh, no, they're very clean. They are very clean if you clean them properly afterwards. You don't want to build a cake up in them. Uh, and if I use a little bit of brandy, but turn over and just to keep them clean, and and then they they retain their ability to uh, give you a, a ghost free smoke. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go into that in a little more detail maybe uh, in a couple of videos just to you know to try and you know be a little bit more positive and rather than saying they're not very good, say well these are some ideas I've had that might improve. Uh, the reviews themselves. I am not uh, uh, an expert in as, uh, in as much as I have no credentials, but I have smoked a pipe for a, a number of decades now. Yeah, yeah, a number of decades, more than one. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so you know, I do have a, a kind of idea, and I'd like to share that with people. Uh, you know, and I'd be more than happy if people say, "Well, I think that's some load of rubbish." Uh, you know, to um, to say so, but you know. Uh, it's to try and eliminate uh, some of the more subjective elements of reviews. I thought it tasted like an old sock or, you know, things like that, which don't help. I think uh, what helps is to say, uh, you know, what's in it, you know, who made it, who blends it, you know, the balance of the, the mixture itself, uh, you know, how it burns in a pipe. Because, you know, you might, that will influence... Um, you know uh, what what pipe you smoke. You know, for example, I always find smoking flakes. If you don't rub them out, smoking flakes in uh, concave um, pipes, you know, helps them burn better. And uh, you know how they burn. You know, if you want, you know, tobacco that you're going to smoke outside, you might want to take a flake as opposed to a ribbon cut. But you know, those are just things maybe that might help. So anyway. Um, Obviously a little worried about Nico, so I'm not in my most chipper of form. Um, yeah, I just mentioned briefly, don't forget in April, British pipe smokers, there will be a meeting, a, a conclave of British pipe smokers at the Dickens Inn in um, St. Catherine's Dock in London. Um, I'll add more information as and when. Anyway, sorry to be a little uh, flat, but uh, there we go. Um, I hope you all have a very enjoyable week. Uh, keep smoking your pipes, snuffing your snuff, and uh, yeah, cheers. Thank you.